like to welcome everyone here today and tell you wish I had the words to express the honor and the humility I feel to speak to you on this day on Memorial Day. As you know, today is not about an extra day off from work or the beginning of summer vacation. It is a day of remembrance. From the end of the first conflict that resulted in American casualties, there has been a remembrance of those who did not survive the field of battle. It hasn't always been an organized event, or even a day with a name, such as Memorial Day. But it recognized early on that those who gave their lives for freedom and the rights of others were especially worthy of being remembered. Rather than choosing to live for themselves, they were willing to die for others. To stand in our own doorway and defend our loved ones, that which is ours, is a natural act for virtually all creatures. <laughs> to those that leave the warmth, the comfort, and the knowledge of these places for an arena outside of that which is familiar, going with the full knowledge that they may or may not return. For the sake of others, even ones unknown to them, is indeed a patriot. But those who gave their lives freely and did not return can only be described as heroes. There are those who have died in the service of their country who have been gone so long that even the family and the loved ones who mourned and felt the loss so sharply have themselves long since passed. Perhaps the names, the dates, and the circumstances would be lost to the ages were it not for you and I in a day like today. We owe them this remembrance. We owe them a debt of gratitude. One that can only partially be paid by holding our freedoms and the lives and freedoms of others so dear that we would never take them for granted or have them taken away. And paid, too, by honoring their memory. In 1868, Commander-in-Chief John A. Logan mandated that this day be set aside to honor our fallen military comrades who gave everything so that we may be free from tyranny and from oppression. So important was their sacrifice that the United States of America maintains 24 permanent cemeteries on foreign soil to honor the final resting place of the more than 124,000 of our U.S. military who did not come home. Today, in 11 countries around the world, moments of silence will be observed and the graves will all be marked with an American flag. The banner of these brave men and women went to war for and paid the highest possible price for all she represents, as you and I and all the freedoms we enjoy. Regarding the fallen military fighting man after World War I and beyond, General John Pershing said, Time shall not dim the glory of their deeds. These words indeed echo the importance of the sacrifices these men and women made when they answered the call to duty and did not return home. We owe it to ourselves and those to come to continue to fight to make this a better world to live in. As the people we are here to remember have done for us. We must also acknowledge the families of these brave men and women and their daily fights to continue on in their lives in the absence of their loved ones. The truest examples We'll also be remembered here today, maybe a little later in the program. Blue Star and Gold Star Mother. Ladies who have lost a child and their children in the time of war. The idea for the Blue Star Banner was conceived during World War I by an Army captain who had two sons serving in the front lines. The banner was placed in the window or on the door of those who had a child who had gone off to war. It quickly became the unofficial symbol of a child in service. And in 1917, an Ohio congressman read the following into the congressional record in regards to the banner. The world should know of those who give so much validity, the dearest thing in all the world, their children. How right he was. These wonderful, gracious ladies who have raised their sons and daughters, nurtured them with love and care, and bravely watched as they went forward to serve their country, and in turn, each of us here today. What more could anyone possibly give, short of their very life? I'd like to take this moment to thank the fellow veterans that are present here today, those that are here in spirit. It is your actions, your deeds, 
and your courage that helped shape this country and provide us with the freedoms that we so often take for granted. It's often been said that freedom isn't free. It's the most costly thing in the world. You can't pay for it in a lump sum, but in installments that come due every generation. All the U.S. can do is offer the generations to follow a chance for freedom. In closing, I would say this and offer a short prayer. That in the King James Version of my Bible, John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, than that he lay his life down for his friend. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come here in prayer today to offer thanksgiving for those who have gone on, those who have answered the final call, and serve those, your children. We ask that those brave warriors who have gone on to leave be accepted, accepted into thy bosom, into thy care, be with a family and loved ones, for those who remain. We ask these in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. To the veterans, to those who are currently serving, the families of those who came here today, to honor the fallen, I thank you for your time. And with that, let the silence of our fallen heroes sing our national anthem. Thank you. to once more have this uh, center sing for us a version of the what is it? Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace